English is not my first language, so I'm fascinated about the use of language and words and how it is abused and used in the battle against justice. Thirteen years ago when I started working with Julian, preparing the release of the collateral murder video, I'm sure that all of you have seen, it struck me that uh, they used the word engagement in a certain context. No, for me, engagement was something that had a pleasant connotation. This was the use, the word that used when people got together and decided to tie the knot, as I think you call it, until death to them apart. But in the vocabulary of the American military, engagement, yes, it does have to do with death, but it means fatal killing. That is the engagement that the lawyers in Pentagon came up with when they drew up the rules, the rules of engagement. And those were the rules the lawyers drew up and the helicopter pilots were thinking about when they asked for permission to engage, to open fire, to assassinate Matasha Tomal, an innocent civilian who came upon the scene to save the life of an injured man, Said Sma, the word for Reuters. Permission to engage, they asked. Give us permission to engage. Before they opened fire and sprayed 30 millimeter hollow bullets upon the vehicle where inside were the two children, Said and Sma, who were only saved because their father threw his body over them and shielded them in front of the car. Think about these lawyers who are sitting drawing up of these documents, finding new meanings to these words. Yeah. Engagement. It's killing. And think about the fact that Julian is being indicted for publishing these rules of engagement. You are not even allowed or supposed to see the rules they play by in their assassination games, in wars. They do not charge him for publishing the collateral murder video for one purpose only, because they do not dare to have that shown in a courtroom at any point. And you know why. This is how they use language. We all know how the lawyers in Pentagon and the Department of Justice drew up manuals on how the military could torture prisoners. Yeah. Yeah. But of course they didn't call it torture. What shall we call it so it sounds better? Enhanced interrogation techniques. That's waterboarding 80 times, yeah. 90 times. Yeah. Electrocution, hanging up on the hand until you are disjointed with the arms. Torture, pure, no enhanced interrogation techniques. Bravo. Thank now, you. I want to draw up a little scene that we came to learn about in January this year, when Mike Pompeo, former CIA director, later Secretary of State, do I have a boo? Mike Pompeo was director of CIA in 2017, and he was very hopeful that he could become the Republican nominee for election next year. So of course he published a book, his memoir, his fond memoir, from the halls of power when he was director of CIA and later Secretary of State. And think about this, he tells a story that just before Christmas 2017, he sat in a cozy atmosphere with his family. Think about this atmosphere. When the wife is preparing the dinner, I guess, the decoration, the Christmas tea is up, the gifts on the floor, and he tells that he was sitting, browsing through and reading the manual on extrajudicial killings. Shame! That's the Christmas that Pompeo wanted and liked the most. And why is this relevant? Yes, because we now know that in the same period, because of brave journalists who did deep investigation, there were plans being drawn up to assassinate Julian Assange. 
to kidnap him or assassinate him in the Ecuadorian embassy. A real plan that was introduced in the White House. And we furthermore know this because two brave witnesses who are protected have issued statements that they knew about this plan and poisoning was being discussed. That was what Pompeo was being was concocting just before Christmas 2017 for the head of the CIA. Pompeo! No. We are possibly not going to hear about all this in the court of law, in the extradition hearing, and the high court. Why? Because on 6th of January, Justice Swift, as he, his name is, his name is Justice Swift, decided after almost nine months of deliberation to spit out three and a half page of his ruling that he saw no reason for Julian Assange to have an appeal in high court. No ruling at all. He complained about the mass of paperwork and documents that he was pestered to go through. 200 pages, too long. It's about a man's life. That's a defense document. It should have been less. I see nothing there. The story about uh, the plan to kidnap and kill Julian Assange? No, it's just a journalistic story. It's based on 30 named and unnamed sources published in Yahoo News, written by three prominent investigative journalists. No, it's just some speculation by a journalist. The protective witnesses who knew that there was a plan to poison Julian Assange, now not worthy of being heard in the High Court in London, said Justice Swift. And on and on he went, in the three and a half pages. He didn't go through any details. He didn't bother. That document, you should read it. It clarifies for us that the entire judicial process in this country is a facade. Yeah. It's a total facade. Yes, it, is. it is injustice, persecution, blows in to make it look like it's justice, but it's not. And the more steps we take in the courts here in London, the more obvious it becomes. And Justice Swift, he doesn't even spend much effort in trying to cloak the real fact of the matter that he was, had already decided to take a politicized opinion before he even got the 200 documents. And I doubt that he read through the entire thing. He was probably reading the memoirs by the great Mike Pompeo at the time. My good friend Craig Murray wrote an excellent piece the other day. Please read him and support him. He is very good. And he reminded people how fascism and Nazism crept into the third, into the German uh, psyche in the 30s. And there was no shortage of lawyers and scholars, legal scholars, to write up the justification for the wrongdoing. And at the Nuremberg trial, there was no shortage of documents, probably more than 200 as a defense document. Oh, listen, it's all in the laws. It has been passed out laws, and these legal scholars, they said I was in the right. And we got orders to do it. It's called the Nuremberg defense. It was dismissed at the Nuremberg trial. When it comes to these heinous acts, you have to be accountable. No matter what the lawyers have drawn up, yes! no matter what the facade has, and that is what we are going to be having in mind. Yes! We are going to hold these people account, every yes! individual that has taken part in this persecution of Julian Assange. Do not forget that. We will get history, if not history, to judge these people, and they will be spot on. The sons and daughters and granddaughters and grandsons, they will be ashamed of the legacy of those individuals in the court, in the entire bloody corrupt system who took part in this persecution. But we are all, almost running out of time. We need to save a man's life. We need to save journalism. We need to act now and we cannot stay silent. We need to scream out from the top of our voice. 
stop this. No, no. no extradition, free children assault. Yeah.